All right, thank you so much. Uh, I think it's great that there are so many people here to see a math talk on a Sunday morning. Uh, you know, like, I love math, and I got into math when I was very young, and part of why I got so excited about math was through games, different kinds of games and different kinds of puzzles, and there's so much interesting math behind puzzles and games, and that's probably the kind of thing that leads a lot of you to be here now. Uh, and when you get to be a mathematician, when you go through college and graduate school and then beyond, that never really stops. So one of the things that I want to try to convince you of is that there are a bunch of really interesting questions that mathematicians don't know how to solve now that are easy to explain and are related to puzzles and games you might already know about. So, all right, I'm going to need a bunch of volunteers throughout, uh, throughout the talk. And I think I have my first one. All right, so here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with tic-tac-toe. So, let's see, how do I make this show up? Okay, does anybody not know how to play tic-tac-toe? All right, so maybe some of you don't know, but you're not willing to admit it. So, remember the goal is there's two players, X and O, and you take turns, and the goal is to get something like three in a row. Right, so, so here, X is the winner. Right, any questions? Good. Do you want to play? Yes. All right, come on up. So we're going to play twice. Once you go first, once I'll go first. Because there might be an advantage to going first or going second. So. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Here you go. All right. You can play the person sitting next to you if you want to try to, you know. All right, and it looks like a draw. Good game. Rematch? All right, now I'll go first. I've thought a lot about this, so I play weird moves. Uh, aha. All right. I knew it. Again, good game. I mean, it's a little unfair. I spent a couple hours thinking about this yesterday, so I sort of have an advantage. So, so three by three tic-tac-toe, probably if you play it enough, eventually you'll get to a point where the game ends in a draw, where there are tricky things that O can do so that there's no way that X can force a victory. So, so this is what I mean by tic-tac-toe is a draw. that there is no strategy that x can follow to guarantee victory. So, so what do we do with that information? You could just stop playing, which is probably what a lot of you have done. Uh, but another thing you could do that mathematicians like to do is take a problem that we understand and change it around a little bit to get a new problem. So what if we played on a different size board? Like say 5 by 5, 2, 3, 4. Does that look like 5 by 5? Yeah. All right, I need a new volunteer. Yeah, sure. Come on up. Oh no, is this too high? Yeah. No, you're good. All right, what color do you want to be? Here you go. Okay. First or second? Second. All right. And you need five in a row to win now, not just three. I get so nervous, like. Ah. All right, now I feel like there isn't really 
anything left for me to try. I kind of think all the lines are blocked. Good defense. Well played. And it looks like a draw. Good game. Well played. All right. So, did anybody has anybody tried playing tic tac toe on a larger board before? Yeah, it's sort of it's harder to win on a larger board. And there's one way to explain why it's harder to win, which goes like this. So, here's your five by five board. If you want to win, there's a three by three board in the middle, right here, right in the middle. And if you want to win, you have to win on this board too. Right? Any line except these four outer lines. I have so many colors. So, the, so there's a line here, a line here, a line here, and a line here. But every other line goes through the middle board. And in fact, every other line consists of a line in the middle board. So if O has a way to draw in the 3x3 three three game, then one thing you could try is just to try to draw in the middle and then not to give away all the squares on the outside. So there's a way to make this very precise. And what I'll say is 5x5 uh, five five is a draw. And what O should do is O tries to draw in the middle. And if X plays on the outside, O should just play next to X. So that's the idea. So somehow, is that a question? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah feel free to ask questions throughout the talk. Uh, could, could you mention um, the situation with Gomoku, which is played for lines of 5 by 5 but on a standard size 19 by 19 Go board? Um, oh, yeah, is okay. Is that also a draw? I don't know the answer for that one, but that's a great question. One thing you could do is just take a larger board and say, maybe you don't have to get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row to win. Maybe you only need four in a row. There are lots of ways to get it around. So what you're suggesting is 19 by 19, where you need five in a row to win. I don't know. So people definitely study this, but I'm not sure for that one. Not off the top of my head, but but that's the kind of thing we could figure out. Uh, so okay, so there's. It seems like when you need to get, if you have a 5x5 five five board and you need 5 in a row, it's harder to win even than 3 in a row. So here's an exercise. Here's homework for your Sunday afternoon math lecture. 4x4 four four is also a draw. And you can use the fact that you can't win in a 4x4 four four game to show you can't win in a 6x6 six six game. It's the same idea that inside a 6x6 six six grid, there's a 4x4 four four grid. And if you can't win in the 4x4 four four grid, you can't win in the bigger one as well. So, so here we go. So here's our first result of the day, mathematical theorem. You can take any size grid. Let's say tic-tac-toe on an n by n grid. So OK, what is n? n is just a number, like 3 by 3, 4 by 4, and so on, is a draw for any n greater than or equal to 3. So if I draw you a 10 by 10 board and say you need to get 10 in a row to win, it's pretty easy to see that you can't force a win. There's no strategy you can follow. So, so here's one. One thing, I didn't mention two by two tic tac toe, so why not? Because you win. Because you win. Anything you do, literally anything you try, X will win. Okay, I'm X. 
O has to block. And now any other square, X is the winner. So 2 by 2 is a win for X. Maybe not so interesting. OK, so what's one way to change this problem to make it interesting again? Well, instead of playing with a, a grid, you could play with a three-dimensional grid. So who's seen this before? Three by three by three tic-tac-toe. All right, so let me just explain. So you can think of it as three boards next to each other. The high board, the middle board, the low board. And you can win with a line inside of any of the boards. This is a winning line. This is a winning line. But you can also have lines that go between the boards. So something like, like this is a line that goes from the high board diagonally down to the low board. So this is a line. And here's one more. Uh, let's say this is the hardest one to see. Something like this one, the middle one, and the lower right. This is also a line. Right. Any questions about sort of the setup of the game? You should try this. You should beat your friends. I need another volunteer. All right, yeah, come on down. So again, we're going to play twice. What color do you want to be? Uh, Green, red, blue? Uh, blue, I blue it is. Do you want to go first or second? Second. Okay. So there's something different about the 3D version than the 2D version. All right, good block, good defense. And now I have to block this. If I make a mistake and we lose, we can edit this out on the video, right? <laughs> OK, but now I have an attack here. So it's this one, this one, and this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot, right? All right, good game. Mm -hmm, good game. Rematch, and now you go first. I always think of X going first. I don't know. That's the second time. You went first with O as well. Oh, yeah. OK. I have to block this. He's building suspense. Oh, now I'm in trouble, though. Like serious trouble. Oh, well, OK. I'm going to block this one, which you have the middle. It's like you're toying with me. All right, good game. Well played. All right. So, OK, so what's different about 3x3? Three three? Uh, yeah, so. Three by three by three, tic-tac-toe, is a win for x. And the strategy, so who can describe what's a good strategy for the first player in this game? Yeah, just go in the middle. So the middle square has so many lines going through it. Let's see, where did my board go? The middle square has so many lines going through it that if you go in the middle square, you have this crushing advantage and you can turn it into a victory. Uh, so here's something that's harder to see that's a little surprising. So the idea is to play in the middle. And in fact, if x plays anywhere except the middle, what should the second player do? Play in the middle. And the second player can force a victory from that point on. So that's a lot harder to check. Uh, o can force a victory. So x always goes first. OK. So you can ask these questions like, why is the middle so good? How many lines 
go through the middle? And the answer is a lot. Way more than any other square. So here's one way to think about it. So how many lines are there in regular tic-tac-toe that go through the middle? There's the two diagonals and then these two. So there are four in here. And then for any square down here, like this one, there's a line that goes through the middle and hits something at the top. So there's one line through this point, this point, this point. There's another line, this one, this one, this one. And so on, you get nine more. So that's a little quick. You should think about the details of how you check there's exactly 13 lines. But the answer is 13. And that's way more than any other square. OK. So yeah, question. Ah, but, but there are four lines through the middle square down here, but those don't go through the middle of the middle, the like core of the, you know, cube. So, uh, okay, so now, we're, now we have a problem again, which is three by three tic-tac-toe is a draw. Three by three by three is too easy for x to win. So we have to change things even a little more to come up with a game that's really interesting, that's in the boundary of like, where it's maybe you can win, but it's really hard to win. OK, so what can we do? So before I change out of 3 by 3, there's one other weird thing going on here. So here's an exercise for you when you go home. So if you get tired of playing 3 by 3 by 3 tic-tac-toe because it's too easy to win, what you should do is try to draw. So you and your opponent, x and o, play together. Fill up the board and try to make it so nobody wins. Okay. And the punchline is that that's impossible. So, so it is completely impossible. There's way too many lines uh, to draw in 3 by 3 by 3 tic-tac-toe. And the idea is a set with no lines, like if you have 27 total squares, remember 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 total squares. If you wanted to fill up the board, x would have to have 14 squares and o would have to have 13 squares. And a set with no lines has to be small. So this is not easy to check. This is a homework problem I give to my college students every year. Uh, and you should think about it. Uh, but okay, let's try to find an interesting game. I'm building suspense through having too many pieces of paper. Aha. OK. Here we go. Oh, how do I zoom out? Oh no, I printed it too large. I don't think I can zoom out any farther. For a young person working in science, I'm like remarkably technically unadept. So <laughs> I'm sure that like all of you in the audience could figure this out because you were pretty much born with an iPhone in your hand. But OK, so here's the idea. 4x4 four four tic-tac-toe, 4x4x4. Four by four by four. I'm sorry you can't see the very, very bottom. It's the same thing. You need four in a row to win. So you can have vertical lines like this one, this one, this one, this one, the top left corner of every board. So I need a volunteer. And here the game is really complicated, so we're going to have to play with a kind of time limit because these games can go on for like five minutes, ten minutes very easily. All right, right up in the front. Here we go. Were you practicing before? Because I really don't want to lose. OK. What do you think? You want to go first? Uh, Second? I'll go first. So that should be an advantage. So the pressure is kind of off if I lose. Oh, OK.
You can try this at home, by the way. There's a whole bunch. I printed out a whole bunch of these boards. You can take them with you when you leave. Uh, you can wonder, is it good to spread out your X's and O's across the different boards, or do you want to kind of concentrate in one? I'm also just saying strategies out loud to try to throw you off. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, one, two, three, four. Ah, but here, so this isn't, yeah, so this line does, this one is one, two, three, four would oh. make a line. You need to, you still have oh, to have okay. it be like a straight line if you think of it being a cube. But all is not lost. Okay. Uh, where did you just go? There. All right, you can take this one back because okay. the rule is unclear. And you want to block yeah. here instead. All right, so for simplicity, I'll take this one. Dramatic moments, right? I like those. The points where it's very clear that you have to block an attack because I don't need to think. I can just relax a little bit. Ugh. All right, I guess I'm going to play in here. Okay, I see what you're after. Oh, you can't see the very bottom row, but I I'm telling you, it's very exciting. Uh, Where did you just go? Uh, I think there and there. Okay. I feel like I'm in trouble. Oh, I had this great idea that I was going to win right there. Wait, where did you go again? Here. The stress is getting to me. Who's winning right now? Am I losing? Am I losing and I'm not realizing it? I have no idea. Yeah, it's really hard. It's, it's hard. So this is complicated enough that it's really unclear who's winning at any given time. Oh. Now I have this diagonal down oh. here. All right. But, so you can see how it goes. If we had more time, I would definitely. Well played. We could have a rematch. OK. So here's the question. Who's supposed to win this game? Right? So, yeah, who's, who wins this game? So, so remember, 3 by 3 by 3 is a win for x, but 4 by 4 is a draw. So it's conceivable either way, that it could be a win or it could be a draw. So there's a research paper about this from 1980. One thing that's pretty amazing is it's one of the, this involved a lot of computer calculation. So here's an example. Here's a page from the paper. You can make a tree where here's the empty board. If x goes here, here are all the different games that could result from there. And then here's another move down. Very complicated. But the punchline is uh, this is a win for x. Mm hmm but it's very hard for a human to learn the strategy to always win. There's a computer program you can play online that will never lose. So I want to show you something from this paper. Uh, you can see that this is really complicated. There's so many squares that there's so many different possible games that it's really hard to check them all by hand. So this paper is by uh, uh, Potashnik. And the acknowledgments, can you see that? Is that a good size? OK, so I'll, I'll read it. Uh, I am deeply indebted to SC Eisenstadt and the Yale Computer Science Department for allowing me to comp complete this project. At commercial rates, 10 cents per kilocore second, I'm imagining that the young people in the audience have no idea what that means, but 
some small amount of computer time by today's standards, this project would have cost me about $50 million. So I think that's really cool that back in 1980, you had to sign up for computer time. There was one computer that everybody had to share in the computer science department. And he writes elsewhere in the article that he got a friend of his to let him run his computer programs, checking all these configurations overnight, late at night, for free. If he'd had to pay for it, figuring out four by four, four, by four tic-tac-toe would have been worth $50 million. So there you go. So if anybody has 50 plus million dollars to kill, to, to waste, to spend, I shouldn't say waste, here's the first unsolved problem for the talk. So no one knows, is five by five by five a win or a draw? A win for x or a draw? So this is an unsolved problem. So if you could solve this, which would definitely involve a lot of computer calculation, that would be awesome. So here's the hint. Everyone thinks, I mean everyone, not everyone thinks about this, but it's probably a draw. Okay, so I want to give you some other tic-tac-toe type problems. Why is it probably a draw? Just from people have done computer experiments sort of using the same strategies that lead to a win for the 4x4x4 four by four by four case, and those strategies don't work. So something else would really need to... There would need to be some other way to win. Yeah. So, so here's another way to think about it. And this is how you might want to think about it if you were a computer. So we have a 3 by 3 grid. And what we're going to do is assign every square a pair of numbers. So let's say A and B where A says which column you're in, and B says which row. So here will be our columns, 0, 1, and 2, and here are our rows, 0, 1, and 2. So what is this square? Yeah, you can just shout it out so I heard the right thing. So this is 2, that's which column we're in, and 1. So this is 2, 1. Okay, so what is a line? So if you describe it in this way, what is a line? Well, it's three points, A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, where either all the AIs are equal, and the bi's are 0, 1, and 2. That's a, a right, like here's 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. Or all bi's are equal. Or you have the three points 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Or there's one other possibility. What's the last one? Yeah. All right, yeah, exactly. That's the diagonal line that goes this way. 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2. So you can describe your lines in terms of these sets of numbers. OK, so what does that let us do once we think about it like this? So now I can't draw a board for you anymore. But you can think, what would tic-tac-toe look like in four dimensions? So what that would be is your points are given by four numbers, A1, B1, C1, D1, where each is 0, 1, or 2. And your lines are described in a similar way. You can see what a vertical line would have to be. And I'll say, there. That's an exercise for you to figure out exactly what the set of lines should be. OK, so there's no reason why we only have to do this with three. Now we can think, what about 
4 by 4 by 4 by 4. What do you think? Is that a win or a draw? <laughs> you don't really have to think about it in terms of space to guess the right answer. So like, how many people think it's a win? How many people think it's a draw? How many people are not voting at all that you're not taking a stand? There we go. So, so it is a win. So this is a win. And here's, here's the way to think about it. 3 by 3 is a draw, but 3 by 3 by 3 is a win. Sorry, is a win. The idea is in higher dimensions, it's easier to win. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation that maybe will be unfamiliar to people, but instead of saying like 5 by 5 by 5, we could write this as 5 in brackets. This tells you how many rows, how many squares in a row. And then a 3 up top. And this tells you how many dimensions. OK, so, so here, what does this mean, n to the k? This means n squares in a row, n by n by n by n, k times. So, so here's two more unsolved problems that people would be really interested in if you could solve. So part of why I want to mention all these unsolved math problems is that if one of you goes on and solves one of these problems, then because I mentioned it to you, I feel like I get to take a little bit of the credit, like 5%, <laughs> something like that. So I think that's how it works. OK. So it's harder to, yeah. So. When you go from 3 by 3 to 4 by 4, it's harder to win on 4 by 4 than it is on 3 by 3. So the idea is that it's harder to win when n goes up. So here's the real way of saying it. If the n to the k, remember n by n by n by n by n, k times, game is a draw, then the n plus 1 to the k game is a draw. So one way to think about it is going, if 3 by 3 is a draw, then 4 by 4 should also be a draw. But it's not obvious at all. So I'll tell you. Here's what we know. We think that this is true. Everyone thinks that this is true. We know that if n to the k is a draw, then if you make the size of the grid too larger in every direction, n plus 2 to the k is a draw. And the argument here is what I showed you before, that like inside a 5 by 5 grid, there's a 3 by 3 grid in the middle. Win on the middle board, you shouldn't be able to win on the bigger board that contains it in the middle. But that argument doesn't quite work when this 2 is a 1. So there's one problem. And here's another. It's easier to win in higher dimensions. So if the n to the k game is a win, then the n to the k plus 1 game is a win. So 3 by 3 by 3 is a win. 3 by 3 by 3 by 3, did I say it the right number of times? Four times? Should also be a win. And basically any strategy you try will work. That as you go like with more numbers, more dimensions, it should be easier to win. And we don't know how to prove this either. So, I'll transition from tic-tac-toe to something else. Uh, 
after saying one more thing. So here's one more sort of place where sort of difficult modern mathematics meets these puzzles and games that we've known about for a long time. Oh, OK, so here's one question. Here's sort of a boundary question. Is 5 by 5 by 5 by 5 a win for x? The answer is probably yes. So remember, 5 by 5 by 5, we don't know. It's probably a draw. And you go up one more dimension, it's probably a win. But we don't know. Interestingly, this might be easier to prove than proving 5 by 5 by 5 is a draw, because all you have to do is show that there is one strategy where x can force a victory. You don't have to consider all possible strategies. OK, so here's one more transition thing. So remember, 3 by 3 by 3 cannot end in a draw. It's just impossible to fill up the board so that there's no lines if there's 14 x's and 13 o's. So there's this difficult modern mathematical result called the Hales-Jewett theorem. So I'll mention the name in case you want to look it up. I don't want to explain exactly what it says. But one thing it says is a set with too many points can't, has to have a line. So what does that have to do with tic-tac-toe? So what that means is, OK, here's our next mathematical theorem, difficult mathematical fact. For every n, and remember this is the number of squares in a row, there is a k. Remember, this is the number of dimensions. So that the n by n by n by n by n k times game cannot end in a draw. So this is pretty, this is amazing. This is kind of hard to prove. So here's the exercise. So for n equals 3, remember for n equals 3, I said k equals 3, you can't possibly have a draw. So what is this number for n equals 4? So 4 by 4 by 4 tic-tac-toe, there's no winning strategy. But it's definitely possible to fill up the board so there's no winning line. But what about 1 4 by 4 by 4 by 4, or 4 by 4 by 4 by 4 by 4, or whatever? So these questions are the kinds of things that actually come up in other areas of mathematics and people are really like into. OK. Any questions about tic-tac-toe stuff at this point? I'm going to transition a little bit. Yes? Yeah? Um, how would you play? <laughs> right. That's a good question. So <laughs> actually, that's such a good question that I kind of feel like, did I tell you to ask that beforehand? So. So here's a 4x4x4 four by four by four board. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. One way to think of four dimensions is take four three-dimensional boards and put them next to each other and assign each one a color. And say, like, this is the red board. Here's the blue board. The green. And the brown. Ah, all these colors start with B. E. And the gray. Silver? I don't know. Oh. Yellow. And you can say, OK, a line can be something where you have the same square in all four different colored boards. Like now this is a line because you have the top left square in every one of the four boards next to each other. So that's my best piece of advice about how to picture four dimensions. I don't really have a good suggestion for five. So yeah, but that's a great question. Like, How would you actually play this game? 
If you tried to play this game, there's so many squares that it might take you like half an hour, an hour, something like that. So, yeah, I think someone should try it. Probably not me, but two of you should play. Uh, okay, so I want to change a little bit and talk about another game. It's a game about points and lines. Maybe it doesn't seem that way. So how many people have seen Set before this card game? All right, cool. So here's how it works. So there's a, so each card has four attributes, has four properties or, yeah, I'll say properties. So we have the number of symbols, which is going to be one, two, or three. We have the color, which is going to be red. I always have to remember purple or green. Here you go. Oh, it's too bright. Red, purple, green. We have the shading, which is going to be clear. I don't have a clear one up here right now. Solid or stripes. And then we have the shape. And the shape is going to be a diamond, uh, an oval, or this squiggly S thing, which I can't draw at all. I'll try to find you one. Maybe if I look at it, I can do it. <laughs> I was always better in math class than in art class. So, OK, so that's the setup. And there's exactly one card for each combination. For each combination. So how many cards are there? Well, there's three choices for the symbol. And then there's three choices for the color. And then there's three choices for the shading. And finally, three choices for the shape. So there's three times three times three times three, 81 total cards. OK. So the goal of the game is you deal out a bunch of cards and you want to get sets. And a set is a collection of cards where in each property, They're either all the same or all different. Ah. OK, does that make sense? Yeah. So I'll show you a picture. This should help. Uh, OK. Here we go. So maybe the color isn't so clear. This one's red. These two are purple, and everything else is green. So there are a lot of sets here. So who can give me an example of a set? Yeah, sure. This one? Yeah, exactly. So this is a set because there are four properties. Color, and in color, they're all the same. The number of symbols, and the number of symbols is all different. The shading, they're all striped. And then the shape, they're all this squiggly thing. Yeah. Yeah. The red pill on the upper left, the two diamonds, purple, right below it, and then all the way on the far right, the striped kidney beans in the previous. Yeah. So this one's harder to see. So they all have a different number of symbols. They're all different colors. They're all different shapes. And they're all different shading. So that's also a set. So the way that you play is you deal out a bunch of cards, 12 cards usually. And the players will look for sets. And if you see one, you say set. And then you take those three cards, and then you replace them. So let's see. I'm not going to be able to find a set on the fly. but. You might say, if this was the start of the game, say set, 
and you would take the top three and then you would replace them. So that's, the goal is to get as many sets as possible when you go through the deck one time. So it's, I like this game a lot. This, I think this is very fun. There are all sorts of great math questions you could ask here, like how many total sets are there? Or why do we play with 12? If you deal out 12 cards, how likely is it that you have at least one set? Questions like that. So one thing I want to do, OK, so I, I also printed out some, uh, some other things for you to look at. One is a puzzle. So you can go to, actually, the New York Times has a set puzzle every day. So, they put up a puzzle and they say, can you find all the sets in this collection of cards? So here, there are exactly five. So I printed out some copies of this so you can look at that uh, on your way out. Or you could do harder things like say, how many sets are there here? I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, this is an interesting configuration because it's kind of like a magic square. Every one of the lines is a set. And in fact, there are these extra lines that go like here, here, and here, where you're allowed to wrap around. That's a diagonal line where you kind of go here, here, and then the next diagonal square would be here, but it's not there. So you go back here. That's a set. This is a set. Everything in sight is a set. So you can ask, what's going on that these kinds of things exist? So OK. So I guess the, the question I want to ask now is, why did I bring this up? So what does this have to do with lines? Well, what we're going to do is, in each property, we'll assign each possibility a number. So let's say I'll write in a different color to make this better. That for each property, we'll just say 0, 1, and 2. So this, this looks bad because now if you have three symbols, you get a 2. If you have one symbol, you get a 0. Red will be color 0. Purple is color 1. Green is color 2. 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. So now what is a card? So then a card is a collection of four numbers. A1, B1, C1, D1, where each is 0, 1, or 2. So now this should look a lot more like how I was describing tic-tac-toe at the end of the tic-tac-toe discussion. Right? So OK, so what is this card? What are the numbers for this red, stripey, oval, two thing? So what's the first, yeah, what does it get as the first number? Yeah, 1, 0, 2, 1. So you can do that for any set of cards. For any card, you can assign it a number. And now the punchline is, what is a set? Well, it's three cards, so it's three numbers. A1, B1, C1, D1. A2, B2, C2, D2. A3, B3, C3, D3. Where for each letter, <coughs> What needs to be true? So what happens? So if they all have the same number of symbols, like if they all have one symbol, then the A's are just 0, 0, 0. And if they all have a different number of zeros, sorry, a different number of symbols, then the A's, one of them is 0, one of them is 1, and one of them is 2. So for each letter, they're either all the same, or all different? All different. So that's the game. So you could just take away the cards and say, well, 
we don't want to have these cards with these symbols anymore. Let's just play with sets of four numbers. If you do that, it's way less fun. <laughs> don't do that. I'm actually better at that version of the game than the one with the symbols. Oh, no. Uh, this is dramatic pause. Uh, I've never been so good at being able to like see the different. Aha. All right, there we go. Being able to see the different patterns. So, so OK, what kind of math is this related to? So I won't say this in, in detail, but one thing you could do is you add up the A's. A1 plus A2 plus A3. If these three cards are a set, what could this possibly add up to? Yeah. Right, so it could be zero if all of them are zero. It could be three if they're all ones, or if they're zero, one, and two in some order. Or it could be six if they're all twos. But that's it. If they're not a set, then other things could happen. If they're not a set, there's some property where the four, no, where the three numbers add up to something else. Then it's 0, 1, or 2, and it adds up to 3. Yeah. Right. So there's only these three possibilities. So I'll just say that this thing about cards and lines is related to the geometry of this weird space, of this space called F3 to the fourth. So I won't explain exactly what that means, but the 3 is the number of possibilities. for each property. And the 4 is the number of properties. OK, does that make sense? Question? Yeah. All right, so here's our next difficult mathematical result. This is not easy to prove at all. This first part is not so bad. There is a collection of 20 cards with no set. So this isn't so hard to prove, because what would you need to do to show that this was true? You would just have to find 20 cards that had this property. And OK, I've now spoiled this puzzle. Here it is. So there are no sets among this collection of 20 cards, which is really unusual. So you can really think about it and check. Uh, but you can show there are no sets in here. And that's the best you can do, or the worst you can do, depending on what your goal is. In any collection of 21 cards, any of 21 cards, there is at least one set. So one way to think about this is this collection of 20 cards with no sets is a special collection of 20 points in this space with no line. So the very last thing I'll say, I'll stop right now. But there's this other question. So these problems were all about you wanted to put down a lot of points and not have any lines. So you could do the opposite. You could ask, if you place n points, how many lines can you have that do contain three points? So this question isn't easy. So for example, you can see this one down here. This is the best you can do with nine points. The first thing you might try is to just put your points in like a tic-tac-toe configuration because now any tic-tac-toe line contains three points. So this gives eight. And it turns out if you squeeze these two points in a little bit, you pick up one extra line. So 
We know the answer for n up to 14 and n equals 16. That's it. So this one is very closely related. This is called the orchard planting problem, obviously. That's supposed to be a joke. So the, <laughs> thank you. So the very last thing I'll do is I'll explain why it's called the orchard planting problem. Here we go. So here's the problem explained in a poem. Fain would I plant a grove in rows, but how must I its form compose with three trees in each row to have as many row, rows as trees? Now tell me, artists, mathematicians really, if you please, tis all I want to know. So, so the question is, how do you place n points so that the number of lines with exactly three trees in it is at least the number of points you put down? So when you have eight, you can't do it. When you have seven, you can't do it. You can only start to do it at nine when now you have these 10 rows of three. So I'll stop there. I'd be happy to stick around and answer any questions you have. Uh, I hope that you go home and think about some of these things. And please let me know if you solve any of the unsolved problems. <laughs>